a filmmaker, Andrew Ahn burst onto the silver screen as a genre-bending, soulful, and powerful storyteller. Walking in the steps of Greg Araki in the 1990s, Ahn mixes his backgrounds of being raised in a Korean-American family and being a queer filmmaker in Los Angeles. But unlike Araki, who admits to fabricating many of his stories of parental indifference and serious emotional harm like that in his 2004 feature Mysterious Skin, Ahn brings a much more autobiographical perspective to his films, bringing together Asian-American and queer cinema to create truly compelling and intimate narratives. Take Ahn's first feature, Spa Night, which is set in a Korean-owned spa in Los Angeles and tackles queerness under the gaze of misunderstanding Asian-American parents. The tone of Spa Night is somber, sensitive, literally blue in many instances throughout the film. But in the span of the six years that have passed since Ahn's first feature, his directing work has seen a huge pivot from the invisible in Spa Night to the undeniably visible in Hulu's Fire Island. What may seem on the surface to simply be a career trajectory toward mainstream queer cinema, Ahn's three feature films, Spa Night, Driveways, and Fire Island, are indicative of a personal change for the director, a renaissance of celebrating queerness under an Asian American gaze. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I talk about myself as a queer Korean American filmmaker. In that um, order? In, in that order. You know, I, I grew up here in Los Angeles, I grew up in Torrance, there's a big Korean American community there. and. Um, and there's something about LA that's always been, you know, my home. For you know, Andrew Ahn, a queer Korean-American filmmaker, a United States government that inflamed homophobia and anti-Asian discrimination after the election of Donald Trump could have spelled an end to the director's career as we know it. But his persistence and powerful feature filmmaking continued in Driveways in 2019, which centers around friendship and connection, and in Fire Island in 2022, which portrays the queer Asian-American as more visible than ever before. Andrew Ahn's oeuvre, consisting of his three feature films, represents a journey for the queer Asian American in the United States, from invisibility to visibility, from solitude to community, and from silenced to voiced. Spa Night represents the intersectionality of queer and Asian American cinema in a realistic, perhaps not too optimistic light, addressing issues of family pressure to join certain professions the inherent homophobia that is ingrained in Asian families living in the U.S., and the taboo nature of Asian American queer culture that makes it that much more alluring to the main character, David. The film is a metaphor in itself, as David joins his family's business to aid in their financial struggles, already a reversal of the narrative norm in Asian American films, he discovers a gay hookup ring that is literally underground, in the basement of his family's spa. The use of deep blues in cinematography throughout sets a solemn, even mournful tone in the film. Ahn mentions in an interview with Bright Lights Film Journal that an essential part of his creative process is working together with his cinematographer, Ki Jin Kim, who he calls his closest collaborative partner in filmmaking. And this tone can be credited to creating a sense of yearning for a queer identity for David. The content of Spa Night definitely uh, like lends itself to a potentially more um, like risque representation. But for me, it wasn't about um, the sex as much as it was about the yearning. How does David yearn? Perhaps we can see it most clearly in the scene in which David follows a patron into the resting room. Ahn emphasizes the power of looking in this scene, following David's line of sight when the other patron looks at him in the mirror. Quickly, the cinematographic tone shifts from the deep blues of the spa to the muted yellows and browns of the resting room. When David first enters the room, we shift our focus from his eyes to his feet, a creative tool that Ahn uses to disguise his identity and add a sense of mystery, of unknowing, to his surroundings. The anonymity of subjects, the lack of dialogue, and the ambiguity of movement throughout this scene all contribute to creating the invisibility that surrounds David's yearning. We as an audience know what David wants, but it's hidden, wrong, so far out of reach that David can only lie there and stare at it. As a cultural space, you actually saw kind of a lot, you know, it's just like male nudity, really normal. But then as it got more erotic, you would see less and less and less because I wanted it to be a really subjective experience. It was really from David's emotional point of view.
Even as the story ends, the audience is left with a continual sense of this yearning, as Spa Night is just a moment in time on the path to David's queer identity. His journey is far from over, and it probably won't end in his parents' spa. And as On implicates his own experiences in the story of Spa Night, we can see how he develops his own identity in his next feature, Driveways. Released in 2019 as On's second feature, Driveways sits on the precipice of even greater turmoil in the United States. The global pandemic, and the anti-Asian hate movement that came with it. But in contrast to Spa Night, Driveways tells the story of a young boy, Cody, that experiences his mother grieve while trying to make sense of an ever-changing world. Perhaps building on Catherine Bon Stockton's queer child, Cody and his relationship with widower veteran Dell digs deep into the naivete and unadulterated curiosity of children. Driveways is such a beautiful story about friendship, about connection, and that's really rare. I think that there's a lot of cynical filmmaking where people just want to be cool or bold. At first glance, I was skeptical of the casting of Cody and his mother as Asian Americans. Does this story truly need to be told through an Asian American perspective? Did On cast Cody and his mother simply to highlight Asian American representation in his films? But from a critical lens, this casting is perfect to lay the groundwork for the intricate relationships introduced in Driveways. It's this sense of connection, this sense of hope that drives the story. And while Spa Night, having an all-Asian American cast, broke boundaries on its own terms, Driveways does so by showing that the mind of a child surpasses all racial and prejudicial barriers, that even a closed-minded veteran can find connection in knowing that he is not alone. Take the birthday party scene in the bingo parlor that illustrates this connection beautifully. You miss us too much there, Dale? Absolutely. He's yours? It's no surprise here that Cody wants to move his party from the boisterous roller skating rink to Dell's bingo parlor. After all, he was the only one to show up. The scene is set with a soft light coming through the window, tones of amber and green, making Cody's black and blue sweater stand out amongst the crowd. He's an outsider, but the dialogue wouldn't show it. Dell and his friends treat Cody like an adult, a part of their family. Keep your eyes on that boy, okay? The first number is about to pop, all right? And here, On introduces the idea of chosen family. The family that Dell undoubtedly sought refuge in when his wife passed, and the people that will treat Cody better than other kids his age. By the time Cody's cake gets brought out, the audience feels like we've been in that bingo parlor for hours. The slightly off tune harmonies from the old men remind us that human connection breaks all boundaries. For me, I think it's really about. Um, uh, sympathy, it's about listening, um, you know, I think these are uh, ways for, for people to heal. Um, it's, it's a really difficult uh, political climate, so, uh, you know, uh, societal climate, like I think this is a, a movie that will give people hope and, and optimism for the future. A warning, some of the images you're about to see are disturbing. A wave of violence against the elderly, surge in hate crimes Asian against Americans. Asian Americans. Attacks against Asian Americans. Americans. Which should be a celebratory time coincides with a disturbing America's surge of racist attacks after two surged. Asian women were murdered within just one month. The coronavirus month. is impacting communities across the globe. This outbreak has been an increase in reports of harassment and bias against certain groups of people. Barely a year after the release of Driveways, COVID-19 became a global pandemic that spread to the United States. And like any conflict in a major motion picture, it brought out the worst in U.S. citizens, allowing for a space to inflame an anti-Asian American movement that was never really solved in the first place. Despite this incredibly tumultuous time, Ahn never stopped pushing queer and Asian American freedom in his career. He worked closely on a TV series called Gentified in 2020, about a Latinx family in L.A. dealing with the gentrification of their neighborhood as well as having director credits in 2021 for a few episodes in the hit show Generation, about a group of high schoolers exploring their sexuality. In fact, as the years passed, Ahn's involvement with queer celebrating film media only became more significant, and it culminates in his 2022 Hulu original film, Fire Island. This week is sacred. If I was skeptical of driveways from the get-go, I was infinitely more so of Fire Island. I had seen the trailers for the film on Hulu's website and couldn't help but notice its $10 million budget, blowing any semblance of an indie experience out of the water. On has now graduated from unconventional cinema to the mainstream, 
and with that change he lost some of the key aspects that made his previous works identifiable and unique, including his cinematographer, Ki Jin Kim. Did he sacrifice some of his artistic integrity, part of what made Spa Night and Driveway so powerful, for the opportunity of grandeur on the silver screen? After giving this film a watch, though, I ate my words. In stark contrast to Spa Night's focus on the invisibility of queerness and the strains of unchosen family, Fire Island aims to express the opposite, the release of queerness and freedom and visibility that chosen family offers. Joelle Kim Booster, who plays Noah, and Bowen Yang, who plays Howie, are two queer Asian American lead actors that often get typecast and limited to certain token characters. Their differences in character development in Fire Island are, however, indicative of a more intricate representation of the queer Asian American. On proves in Fire Island that characters can be much, much more than just those two labels in mainstream cinema. Most of all though, the film is a celebration. Not just for queer Asian Americans, but for breaking through the mold of contemporary mainstream cinema and persisting in a time where queer people and Asian Americans have once again been marginalized for being true to themselves. In Fire Island, On says, we're still here and we're not leaving. I've, I've made a gay Korean American film earlier in my career, but it was very solitary, you know? It was very much about a character coming out to himself um, and not necessarily, uh, you know, finding a community. And what a better way to physically represent that perspective on screen than in the fairy scene toward the climax of the film. The juxtaposition here of Howie and Charlie's interaction and the parade of his friends behind him expresses this deep emotional connection to queerness that I hadn't quite seen in On's earlier projects. Taking the classic rom-com trope of chasing down the one true love to win them back and satirizing it, turning it on its head, allows the queer audience to reclaim this sense of destined love. It also definitely helps that Charlie doesn't know what to say or do when confessing his love to Howie. Okay, Charlie, this is your big rom-com moment, okay? You gotta do something big, something stupid. I love you. Oh. This idea of community and an overwhelming sense of support transcends the metaphorical by placing that support in the background of the scene. You actually stole a boat for me. I love that it's a celebration of uh, chosen family and queer joy. Um, and so it just felt really uh, meaningful for me um, to be a part of this project. Andrew Ahn yearns for a better world. One that understands what it means to be queer, and one that understands what it means to be Korean American. And even in 2022, when we accept these issues to be solved, Ahn reminds us through his work that they will always need to be fought for. The director brings an overwhelming sense of hope and happiness to the queer community, and sheds his own shining light on the Asian American perspective. His films are a splendid example of the progress that mainstream queer and Asian American cinema has made since the 1990s with filmmakers like Greg Araki, and all the work that is still to be done. From his queer invisibility in Spa Night, to his connection in Driveways, to queer celebration in Fire Island, On has shown that his story hasn't been easy, and it never will be. But as long as he's creating, he's giving young queer Asian Americans a voice in mainstream cinema. Mm -hmm.